morning everybody we left Brainerd Minnesota this morning and we're just rolling close towards Clearwater Minnesota I'm rescuing a load there uh, there's a truck that has a load of shingles uh, that's going back to Manitoba back home and he broke down and the load needs to keep moving and I don't have a load so we're gonna do a switch I'm gonna give the empty trailer to him so he can grab that as soon as his truck is fixed up and I'm gonna grab the load and continue on to Manitoba with it probably deliver it in the morning so we're on a rescue mission today all right he's at the petrol service center here somewhere I got his phone number I'm just gonna do a quick loop of the parking lot to see if I can find him and my trailer if not I'll give him a quick shout figure out where he's at oh oh that was a pothole why didn't I see that idea who I'm looking for. I'm guessing he'll be close to the service center off to our left. We'll just start here and we'll work our way around the lot. Around to the back here. We're looking for a load of shingles. load of shingles. Ah, I'm not seeing them back here. said he was getting towed to. Uh, it's not here. Okay, maybe he's on the other side of the building. We'll go take a look. If not, we'll find a parking spot and give him a call. He's around here somewhere. He's going to come and find me. So there's the service center right there. But I just punched in the address because I'm looking at the address of this stopping center that I'm at now. And that says, can you see it? 950. And I was sent the address of 750, but I thought it's a Clearwater Travel Center. I'm looking at it on Google Maps now. There's actually another service center just down the street over there. So that's where he must be. So he said he's gonna come here and meet me anyway, so there's no confusion. I mean, he'll come meet me and guide me back to where uh, where the trailer is, I guess. Okay, so he is just down the street right here. I can see him around the corner there already. Get a little switcheroo here and I'll be on my way. up to let him know I'll be there in the morning it's too late to get there today now won't even be close but uh, there they are and I had to double check the paperwork because I pick up from this place and I pick up shingles there all the time I've never been required to tarp it it says on the paperwork whether or not it requires tarping right so I had to go and check the paperwork like, did this guy tarp it when he didn't need to so I, I went and looked at the paperwork now and sure enough it says tarping required Okay, they want us to tarp it, we'll tarp it. I have no problem with that. I'm just I'm kind of confused because we don't have to tarp it for other places that we go to. 
So I guess it all depends on who's ordering it. Maybe that's like a little extra box they can tick off when they're ordering shingles or something. Like, hey, would you like us to tarp it? We don't have to. It's like an extra little perk. Okay, because it obviously, it costs more to haul freight. Like, if you're going to ask us to tarp it, it's going to cost you more for us to tarp it, right? That's an extra expense and an extra time for the driver. Luckily, it wasn't my time, but <laughs> I will have to take those tarps off, roll them up, and then I have to bring them back to our yard tomorrow so that that driver, when he gets repaired and back on the road, he can pick them up at our yard because that's his stuff. Uh, but, uh, yeah, tarping required. Hmm. So when you guys pick up shingles, for you other drivers out there, wherever you pick them up from, whether it be out of, uh, you know, Shakopee or other places in Minnesota, what's the other place that has shingles? There's another shingle manufacturer there. And there's other places around the continent too, that all kinds of places. So when you pick up shingles, are you required to tarp the shingles too? This isn't the first shingle load I've had, I've seen tarped, but the majority of them, overwhelming majority of them, no tarp is required. So I'm just curious, like, what's the status quo? Is it normal to tarp shingles or is this odd? It's odd to me, but like I said, you order some stuff, you ask for it to be tarped, you're going to get it tarped. That's what we're here for. That's what we do. So anyway, uh, I better get on the road. They close at 530. I'm probably going to be there around 7, 630 or 7. And I rushed to get here, switch trailers as fast as I could and uh, it's just not gonna work out. So we're not gonna be in such a rush to get back now, because if I rushed, I'd get back at seven. As long as I get into town, but I'll be there at the crack of dawn as soon as they open their doors. We'll get the stuff off the trailer and uh, we'll figure out what's next after that. Today's a Wednesday when I'm filming this, so tomorrow's a Thursday. I'm still available to do some work for tomorrow yet and the next day and the next if they want me to. What is it? This weekend? Yeah, I could I could keep going. I would. Pro I should probably keep going until Christmas now. Because I'm taking off some time for Christmas, obviously. Obviously. So why not work through this weekend so that I can have more time off at Christmas? Uh -huh, uh -huh. I will have to talk to the boss, a.k.a. my wife, and uh, see if we have any plans this weekend. Because I've learned and I, I know better. You don't make plans until you've checked in with the boss to see if there are already plans that she's told you about six or seven times. I can't remember if she said there was something. There might be something important going on this weekend. I can't remember. I'll have to ask again. And then she'll tell me that she's told me five or six or seven times already. And she's she's right. She probably did. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Rescue mission is underway. Let's go grab some fuel in St. Cloud, Minnesota, because it is ex way cheaper there than anywhere else. Up near the border, I'd be paying about $4 a gallon. Here in St. Cloud, my price is $3.19 a gallon. What? Why is it such a big difference? They're only like eight hours apart. I've already done this, but I'm just checking the trailer brakes and the connection one more time before I leave. Save myself the embarrassment of losing a trailer on the road. Let's get going. Let's roll some fresh air in here. So yeah, it's only like 10 miles away where we're gonna stop for fuel. And I think I'm gonna go up to St. Agath Flying J in Canada, up in Manitoba for the night and grab a shower there overnight. Or grab a shower there and then stay there overnight anyways. That's one thing I love about Pilot Flying J. I always say this is because it's on both sides of the border. I can fuel here in the US, get my shower credit from fueling, right? Then use that shower credit in Canada at a Flying J. Very convenient. It's just Flying J doesn't always have the cheapest prices for me. Sometimes they do. Today they definitely do. You drop your prices on the juice, you get my business. That's how it works. I don't care if it's one cent. If it's one cent lower than the next guy, I'm going there. 
Every little penny and nickel counts. Really hungry too. Thanks. I have to grab something, or I can make a sandwich in the back. I could probably do that. To save some money. Deacon's Corner in Manitoba yesterday, right at the Petro Pass, just to top off the tanks. Or was it the day before? Day before yesterday. Uh, so we drove 1,735 kilometers since we last fully filled the tanks. Not that's after. That's not after we fueled up last, but uh, ba -ba -ba. we paid today a dollar fourteen seven per liter Canadian for fuel. Or three dollars and nineteen cents per gallon. Cost me five hundred eighty-two dollars Canadian, four hundred twenty-eight dollars U.S. It's one hundred thirty-four gallons, or five hundred seven and a half liters. We averaged thirty-seven point nine liters per hundred kilometers since we last fully filled the tanks. Six point two one miles per gallon. Right there in the zone again. But that was some cheap juice. Like I had to double check it. It's legit. Nice. Thanks, pilot. Actually, I should never, ever refer to $1.14 a liter or $3.19 a gallon as cheap. No. No, 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 no. We're not normalizing these high gas prices. So they're still high. That should be under $1 a liter. Under $0.80 cents a liter. That should be under, I'd say under $2 a gallon would be nice. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens doubtful because there's some people that are very powerful that are getting very rich off of this and I doubt that they want to be less rich no I mean once you're a billionaire I mean what's what is there in this world that you can't buy right why do you need more but whatever whatever I'm not mad at them for being rich good for them 
I think we should all be able to get rich. As long as we all have an equal shot at education, equal shot at work. Whatever, you guys know what I say. You guys know what I mean. We're gonna swing into Fargo since we're definitely uh, just gonna be del uh, delivering in the morning tomorrow. I got some extra time, so I'm gonna stop in at Fargo, wash all the salt off my truck so that it doesn't rust away on me. So that's our next stop. It'll be the Blue Beacon at the Petro in Fargo, North Dakota. Oh no, the lineup is all the way back here. All right, then we're gonna cancel our uh, Cancel our truck wash. Shoot. I don't got time to wait that long. I'm just gonna go around here to see if it actually goes all the way around there. It looked like the truck there had fallen asleep. There was no one in front of them. Oh yeah, there's a long lineup. Ah, you can see it off. It's gonna be off to the right over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight people in line. Oh man, I really wanted a truck wash. Okay, we don't have that time today. Back on the road. I don't know when my next chance will be. If I was staying here for the night, yeah, maybe I'd just get in line and wait, but uh, there's work to be done. I have to get uh, Stein back with enough time to get my 10 hour break so that I can get back into the US tomorrow afternoon. Which means I have about an hour to play with right now. That'll be more than an hour wait. Shucks. I mean, they do have two bays open, but... Tonight's not the night. Are you coming in here, bud? You're coming in here, aren't you? All right. Oh, nope, nope, he's going straight in there. Okay. Hands up, guys. I'm just going to sneak on through. Oh, I guess I can't make this corner now. That guy pulled right into where I needed to go. Okay, I'll go to a UE over here. See this yellow truck over here? That's the back of the lineup, all the way back here. It looks like some guys could move forward, but... It's tempting just to wait in line, you know? It's tempting. Maybe I should. Well, I know I should. My truck needs a wash, but... I also have to juggle that with my time. We're north on I-29, going through Fargo now. So the Blue Beacon was full. I'm gonna take a look at the North Star truck wash at the Staymart, up on the north end of town here. I'll be able to see if there's a lineup from the freeway. So if there's no lineup there, I'm just gonna jump over there. Off to the right here, we'll be able to see if there's a lineup. There's the Kenworth dealership, and right after that is the Staymart, where there's that North Star truck wash. Uh, one guy in line. If it's just one guy, that'd be alright. Just one guy in line. Yep. Okay, we're going in. Or all these guys in line. No, they're parked there, right? Okay, no, they're not in line. Okay. We're going in. How do I get in here? Where's the entrance? Ah, here it is. Okay. I think this is it. Is this an entrance? 
No, one more. One more. In 600 meters, turn right on 7th Avenue North. No, I'm going to turn right right here. How about that? Get to that truck wash again. I know you gotta go through here. Right where this red truck is coming from. Hopefully, there you go. You're not gonna drive right down the middle. Good, good. Now I saw other trucks parked back here. I don't know if they're waiting for the truck wash. Because if they are, then I, I'm not gonna wait that long. But I thought they were just parked on the street. Let's go take a look. At least here, if they are in line, then... Look at all these guys. Are these guys all in line? They are, aren't they? Let's see if I can get them on the CB. Are all these trucks in line for the truck wash back here? Or are you just parked? Backing up. I thought he was parking there for night. Look like, at lots of spots here, bud. There's one, two, three, one, two over there yet, more over there. Eh, I should stop trying to figure people out, right? So good day. Or good night. Good evening. We are in St. Agaf, Manitoba at the Flying J. That's where I made it to tonight. I'm gonna go and have a shower. Uh, get some work done on my videos and stuff, and then get a good night's nice sleep. And I gotta be in Steinbeck. Actually, not too far away from us, where I live. Uh, first thing in the morning. So we'll get this off the trailer in the morning, then we'll run back to our yard. I'll bring back the other driver's stuff to our yard there and tag it for him so he can get it when he gets back there. Hopefully he gets fixed up soon. I mean, I still can't figure out, because did I tell you, his drive shaft broke? So I'm wondering, did his diff seize? His rear diff or something? Because his drive shaft going to the rear diff. It just snapped right off, like right at the U-joint snapped off so apparently it happened right in the middle of an intersection too of course right poor guy uh well that's a stressful situation hopefully it gets fixed up quick and hopefully that diff isn't seized because i don't know what else would i guess over torque maybe it was just a little bit uh maybe it was wearing out i don't know i don't know what's going on i'll show you where i parked here though uh i think i got a safe spot you be the judge you let me know did i did i get a good spot here Okay, so I'm right on the edge. Uh, the driveway's right beside me here. I'll show you in a bit. I have a neighbor here. Okay. I already have a neighbor here beside me. Getting backed into or anything. These 
guys coming and leaving shouldn't get anywhere near me, right? Because there's this big boulevard right here. Nobody's going to park up on the grass here. Nobody, right? At least nobody should park up on the grass here. I wouldn't be surprised if they did. But... Not supposed to park on the grass, people. I mean, some people just need to be told that. I got back as far as I could, right up to where my wheels touched the curb. I really like these trailers because we got the mud flaps back here. By law, you do have to have mud flaps on your trailers, obviously. You'll get pulled over and you can get a fine if you don't have a mud flap. So we got mud flaps, but they have them on the back here, right? Which is so nice because other trailers, they have them like right behind the wheels here, right? You guys have seen them. And what happens is then when you back up against a curb like this at a truck stop, they get caught between the wheel and the curb. And then you back against the curb and it rips your mud flap off. Well, now you're in violation. Now you can't get back on the highway until you fix that. At least you're not supposed to get back on the highway until you fix that. Some people need a reminder that they need some mud flaps. Unless you're in Wisconsin. Apparently Wisconsin doesn't care. So once again, I'm still f fighting with my bunk heater to get it to work. I've got it working right now. We'll see if she keeps running. might go off again I might have to fight with it a little bit more so what's what's wrong with it is it's uh, it's filled with soot most likely it's it needs to be cleaned out and serviced so uh, I think there's an air breather like the air because it needs air in there for the flame right and I think that's filling up with soot so it's causing it to smoke a little bit give a little bit of white smoke and it doesn't want to uh, run at high speeds so luckily for me the temperatures haven't been that cold so I haven't had to like really crank up my my bunk heater I've been able to run it at low, but in order for it to get going, it has to like rev itself up and then it comes back down, right? Well, every time that it revs itself up, it snuffs out the flame in there because it's not getting enough oxygen in there. Uh, this is my theory anyways. You can correct me, you Wabasto bunk heater experts. It's called a Wabasto heater. That's the name of the heater is the name. W-E-B-A-S-T-O, Wabasto. It seems, I think I got it going, like first try. Wow. Yeah, it's going. <laughs> lucky, lucky. Last night I had to fight with it for two hours. Luckily I had stuff to do, but the whole time I was like going back and forth and trying to get it started, trying to get it started, it would start up and then it would snuff out. Start up and then snuff out. So what happens is when it revs up to higher speed, the, like the fan, to blow more air, it would snuff out the flame. And then the heater would just wind down and then shut off and I have to turn the whole thing off turn it back on try again it would light up and then up and then it would stuff out the flame but if I can get it to go like like this I got it to go now I think what happens is it, it revs itself up gets warmed up and then comes back down to like almost like an idle right a, a low low speed fan and then it stays running all night and it keeps my truck warm and I don't have to idle my truck like I am right now I'm just letting everything sort of settle down and I've also got to keep my computer I'm working on the computer here so I have to my battery's a little bit charged while I'm doing that. But I, I shut my truck off tonight. And uh, this bunk heater gets me warm. I can't believe it worked on the first try today. Wow. Right on. So what I've been told, or what I've read, what I've been told by the Google, is that uh, what I should probably try first before bringing it in for a service, or taking it apart myself trying to service it, is run, run it on pure kerosene on high for a little while. So next time I'm at my shop, or at home, I'm gonna go buy a little tiny jug of kerosene and I'm gonna take the uh, fuel line that goes into the diesel tanks, because it runs off diesel fuel, take that and just plop it right into a little jug of pure kerosene and I'm gonna crank the heater up on high and just let her give her. And from what I've heard, that will, that, that could clean it out on its own. Just run it through care. And you should be doing that every year. Every year, just run it on cycle, just get it going right up on high, running off pure kerosene and just leave it on high for a while. Let it clean it all up. So I'm going to try that, see if that works. And if it still gives me problems after that, uh, I don't feel comfortable taking it apart myself. I mean, I've looked it up on YouTube. I, I know how to do it now. But it all comes down to time and how valuable is my time. Speaking of time, this guy is sliding his axles right in the middle of the parking lot and blocking the whole park. Look at this. Look at this. This driveway here is plugged right up. Another guy coming in. This guy can't get in because that guy decided that right there, that uh, that was a perfect spot to stop and slide his axles. I 
and he thinks that everything's fine. He's like, this guy's like, what, what? Oh boy, are we gonna get some trucker drama here? Like this guy should know that, that is not where you slide your axles. Like you can't block everybody in. What if any of these trucks needs to go? What if they have a night appointment to deliver uh, produce or something and they need to get out of here? They can't get out of here because that guy's blocking everything. Sliding his axles. Huh. Anyways. Huh. Trucker stuff, right? There's always, it's always something. It's always something. I really think, is he gonna honk? Is he gonna honk? He's trying to sneak by right now. Come on, give it a honk. No, he, he won't honk, it's a truck stop. Yeah, it's a truck stop. You honk, you wake up, you take off more drivers that way, right? See everyone's cool, huh? But when people are learning how to drive trucks, there should be a, a course, a, aside from the driving course itself, a course that is mandatory for everybody to go through. You know what, let's do it every five years. I'd be okay with that. Everybody has to go through the course of common courtesy. And you have, you have to do it. You have to do it so everybody knows and everybody's on the same page. Oh, here's another guy. Another guy trying to get in now. Oh, he's just gonna give her. He's just gonna go right past. See, it is possible to get past him. It's, only, it's, it's just inconveniencing people, right? Which is, it's rude. It is rude. So, what do you guys think? Every five years or so, if you've had your license for five years, in order to keep your license, you have to go through a short course. You could even do it, well, you could do it online, I would say, but then everybody would just skip through it, right? even just do it online on a website or something or go into the DMV I don't know there has to be something right or at least when you get your license at least the one time okay we can agree on that I can compromise on that if you guys don't want to do it every five years fine but some of these guys some of these guys out here they need it every year but whatever as long as when you first get your your class one CDL you should have to go through a mandatory intensive thorough in-depth course on common courtesy what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments section. Maybe we can get something done and change that. That would be a good change. This guy's still here walking around. Common courtesy and how not to be rude. And how it's important not to be rude. And how you shouldn't want to be rude. And how to identify when you are being rude. What do you I think it'd be good. I think it'd be a good idea. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up here. I've been babbling for a while now. Bibble babbling. I gotta get some work done. This, it's getting warm in here now. This heater? Yeah, it's on. First try. Oh, that is that makes me so happy. It's gonna be a nice warm night. I don't have to struggle with this thing. Okay. Remember everybody out there, drive safe. Don't be rude, be courteous. All right, that'll be a new one. Yeah, and end my vlogs off. Be safe out there, keep your head up. Stay alert on the road, pay attention. Oh my, this guy's gonna back into that truck. This guy's gonna back into that truck. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 I wanna hear the crunch. Oh, come on, camera focus. Oh, I wish I could see the other side. He is so close, so close. Okay, he didn't hit him, he didn't hit him. Oh, man, I'm just looking for YouTube gold here, right? Trucker drama, end of the day. Everybody's tired, everybody's grumpy. <laughs> Got people blocking everything. He's been there for 10 minutes now. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Take care. We'll be okay.